Here is a fully automated lead generation and outreach automation that I created inside of NAN, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So to start off, I'm just going to type a message to my AI assistants on Telegram. I'm going to say, get me 20 general managers from Walmart in California. And this workflow takes only about 30 seconds to run. So I'm going to check back once it's complete. Now there's two things this automation just did. The first thing is that it added all 20 leads to my Google Sheets. You can see I have all the information I need, such as the name, the title, email. Also what it did, if I go to Instantly, which is an email outreach software, it added all those 20 leads to my email campaign. I sell an automation like this in my own business for right around $2,500. I have a full case study of how I do that, as well as the template for this automation inside of Automator Academy. You can join the community with the link in the description of this video. Now back to the automation, we're starting off with a Telegram trigger, and all this is doing is receiving the message that I send to my AI assistant. So to do that, I just connect my Telegram credential, and then from there, we're passing the message along to an AI agent. Now for the AI agent, the prompt is just going to be the output of the Telegram trigger, and we do want to turn on require specific output format. I'll show you why here in a second, because we do use a parser for this AI agent. Now the system message is fairly simple. I'm just saying your job is to turn a chat input into four JSON variables. And those variables are going to be the company, which is going to be a string, the location, which is going to be an array, the person titles provided by the user, as well as max, and max is just going to be the number of leads the user asked for. I have further instructions that says for the person titles variable, take the user provided title or titles and expand it. For example, if the user asks for operation manager titles, also include titles like vice president of operations, director of operations, and so on. And I set a cap to how many titles this AI agent creates, which is going to be 10 titles. And you can see here in the output, we do have the company as a string, the location as an array, the person titles as an array, and then the number of leads as an integer. Now next we have an HTTP request node. I just named it company search because we will be using Apollo to search for the company that we asked for. The method is going to be post and the URL is provided from Apollo's documentation. We are going to send a header, which is just going to be our API key for Apollo. After that, we are sending JSON variables and here's how you set that up. First, we have a parameter called Q organization name. And this is just going to be the company that you're asking for. So for example, the company is Walmart. Now for page and per page, we're just searching on page one for the first result. So that is why each of these values is equal to one. Now after the company search, we have added a set fields node. And here we're just mapping the variables to get ready for the next node, which is where we're going to search for the people. Now for this, we just need four variables. And this is from the input column where it says organizations. We're just taking this first organization ID and turning it into an array, which is what this variable is doing here. Now we turn it into an array just because when you do a people search on Apollo, it's expecting an array variable. Next we have location. We're doing the same thing we're doing with company. We're referencing the location variable from the AI agents which is this variable right here, California, and we're just turning it into an array. Same thing for titles, we're gonna reference back to the AI agents node, and then lastly, we're going to do the exact same thing for max. However, we just wanna make sure this is set as a number. You can see the output is very simple. We just have the ID of the company we're searching for, the location, titles, as well as the number of leads we are asking for. So after this node, we have a people search node, and this is how you are going to use Apollo to search for people. The method is going to be post, here's the URL, and then we're going to send a header, which is just going to be our API key. Now for the JSON parameters, here's what we have. We have the organization IDs, and by the way, these parameters are just from Apollo's documentation, so that's where you can find them. And the value is going to be the company ID we got from the set fields node. Same thing for person titles. Contact email status is a parameter from Apollo, and we just want to make sure their email is verified. Next is per page. Per page is how many leads we are taking per page. We only want 20 because we're asking for 20 leads, and we're just mapping that to the max variable. We're just going to check page one to get these 20 leads. 100 leads is the maximum for one page on Apollo, so keep this in mind. If you do want more than 100 leads, you will need to go to page two. For the person locations parameter, we're just mapping it from the location array variable from the set fields node. 
and then include similar titles is a parameter from Apollo, and we're just going to set that as true. Now, after this HTTP request node, we have a Google Sheet node where we're going to check for duplicates. Now, to check for duplicates, we are going to be taking the person ID, which a person ID is assigned to all the leads on Apollo. We're taking all the existing ones we have from our Google Sheets, and we are bringing them back to NAN just so we can compare them with the new leads. And if there are matches, we're going to ignore those because they will be duplicates. So this is how you set up that Google Sheets node, very straightforward. All we're doing is getting the rows. Now, when I first ran this at the beginning of the video, there was no data inside the Google Sheets, which is why this isn't outputting anything. However, because of that, we do want to make sure that in these settings, we have all these output data turned on. This is going to make sure the next node still runs, even if this Google Sheets node doesn't output anything. And the next node is going to be another set fields node. All we're doing is mapping the existing IDs, which are the IDs we have gotten from the Google Sheet from the last node. And we're just going to set that as an array. Now, once again, because I ran this workflow with no existing leads, we have no data here. So if we did run this automation again, these 20 IDs from this Google Sheets would be showing up right here in the output. After this, we're going to have a code node. Now, it would take a long time to explain all of this, but what this is doing is it's taking this existing ID variable, which are the IDs of all of our existing leads, and it's going to be matching it with the new IDs we have gotten. And like I said, if there are any matches, we're going to ignore those leads because they're duplicates. However, if we do have a new ID, that means we have a new lead. In most cases, you're not going to get duplicates just because you'll be searching in different companies. But in case you do search for a company twice, this is a built-in filter to get rid of those duplicates. Now you see the output here, we are going to have three new variables that are created from this code node. And that is going to be has new leads, total fetched, and new counts. Has new leads is going to be used in the next node, which is an if node. And I'll show you that here in a second. And new count is how many new leads we have. For example, if we asked for 20 leads and there were 10 duplicates, this variable would equal 10. So moving on, we do have that if node I was talking about. All this is doing is checking that has new leads variable and checking to make sure it's true because if it was false that means all the new leads we got were duplicates and in that case we just want to stop the workflow but if it is true the workflow is going to continue and by the way if this is equal to false it's just going to send us a telegram message that says no new leads now this http request node is going to enrich the new leads that we have now what does enriching a lead mean well, in this automation, it just means that we are getting their work email, so that way we have a way to contact them. Here's how you set up that node. It's going to look similar to past ones where the method is post, and this is the URL for Apollo. And then we have these two parameters, reveal personal emails and reveal phone number. Now, I have both set as false, just because I don't want their personal email, I want their work email, and then I don't have use for the phone number. Going down to the header parameters, Cache control and accept are both from Apollo's documentation, and then you're going to have your API key once again. Then here are the JSON parameters we are passing along to Apollo to enrich the leads. All we need is the ID, which is the ID of the new leads. So you can see here in input, we have those 20 leads, and each of these leads have an ID, which is from Apollo. So we're just providing that in this node, so that way Apollo knows which lead to enrich. After this node, we do have another set fields node, and all we're doing here is mapping the correct variables so we can add them to the Google Sheets. All of these variables are just from the inputs, so we have the name, the first name, title, email, company, location, LinkedIn, and person ID. So for example, the name is from right here, the LinkedIn URL is right here. All we're doing is dragging and dropping these variables. And the output is very simple. We just have all the information that we need. And the output has 20 items, which are the 20 leads. After that, we're just going to add these new variables to the Google Sheets. So the operation is append row, and the values we are sending to the Google Sheets are just going to be the same ones we just mapped in the set fields node. So that is how you set up the Google Sheets node. From there, I just have a Telegram node, and this is just going to send us a message of how many new leads were added to the Google Sheets. And this variable right here is just from the check duplicates node, which is the code node, and it's that variable it created that shows us how many new leads there are. And remember, the amount of new leads is the amount we asked for minus the amount of duplicates. 
Now, lastly, part of this workflow, I wanted to add the leads automatically to instantly. This way, I just didn't have to do it myself. So I added an HTTP request node so I can connect it to instantly. Setting this up is simple. The method is going to be post. The URL is from instantly's documentation. And then we have a header, which is going to be our API key. Then we just have two parameters here. We have campaign ID as well as leads. So the campaign ID, I'll show you in a second how to get from instantly. But for the leads, we are just passing on the emails and first names as an array. So that way instantly can add those to the campaign. I'll show you how to get the campaign ID from instantly. All you have to do is open up a campaign, go to the three dots right here, click on share campaign. And you'll see here it says campaign question mark ID equals. And it's going to be this right here. All you have to do is copy and paste it back to that parameter. Then once you do that, the workflow is now complete. That is how this automation works. Once again, this can save a lot of time for certain companies that do manual outreach. It's very user friendly. And remember, if you want the case study of how I sell a similar automation to my clients, as well as the template for this automation, you can find it inside of Automator Academy, which is my community. I'll leave the link for it in the description of this video.